Okay, so today we're going to look at combustion, and combustion to most of us is better known as burning. So um, in this example, I've got a candle which is made of paraffin wax. Paraffin wax is a straight chain alkane, and if you take a look at the formula, C31, H64, uh, that makes sense because alkanes have got the general formula of uh, CN, and there we go, so CN, so N is the number of carbons, and H, 2N plus 2, and that's the general formula for all straight chain alkanes. So this makes sense that that is a straight chain alkane. Now when you burn things, you need oxygen. So in those movies where you see people blowing up cars, um, that, that's not going to happen because there's usually not enough oxygen inside the fuel tank to blow up the car. You've got a lot of fuel like uh, petrol or diesel inside the tank, and uh, there's just not enough oxygen. Cars actually need a lot of oxygen to burn their petrol, and this is why cars just don't run underwater. Now, the products of this reaction, um, apart from heat, are carbon dioxide and H2O. So, when you light the candle, uh, when you supply that initial amount of heat, what happens is uh, that the oxygen from the air over here and the um, alkane over there, that alkane is taking the oxygen, combining with it, and we're making that CO2 and we're making H2O, always, as long as there is enough oxygen inside there. Okay, so that's how to do complete combustion of an alkane. Now, um, you can burn all sorts of things. You can burn a, an alkene, you can burn an alcohol, and I'm going to show you how to come up with the balanced reactions for those. So, not only can you burn an alkane, but you can use just about anything to burn. And the thing which we burn is very often called a fuel. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that you've heard of the word fuel, and fuel is just anything which you burn with oxygen to get energy. Unfortunately, uh, burning of hydrocarbon fuels like this uh, produces a lot of CO2. H2O is not a problem because that comes back down as rain, but uh, CO2 contributes towards climate change. Um, CO2 unfortunately absorbs and re-emits a long wave of um, infrared, and that's heat. It bounces heat back down to Earth. It would have escaped out to space, but it's creating a blanket of the Earth, and uh, this is causing a lot of catastrophe. Um, there's a lot of debate about this, but I'm not entirely sure why. The science is very solid. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a few examples of combustion, and I'm going to see if you can make up your own balanced chemical equation for these. Remember that combustion is a really nice section because it's easy, easy marks. Okay, uh, so we're going to do an alkene over here, and this molecule, if you name it quickly, and it's an alkene, this is propene. Okay, so that conforms to the general alkene formula of CnH2n. Okay, so if I told you to do complete combustion of an alkene, uh, you would know to take the number of carbons, um, in this case 3, and then say H2n, so that means 2 times 3 in this case. So I know that there's twice as many hydrogens as there are carbons. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to do complete combustion of an alkene. Okay, first step always uh, when we do combustion is you need the magic ingredient, and that was oxygen if you were listening. Okay, um, and then your reaction goes. Now we're not going to balance it initially, but let's write down the, the reaction products. Okay, so always CO2, which is a gas, plus H2O. Now I'm not going to put in the phases, let's just keep this simple for now. Now the trick to all of these is the balancing. The balancing of these is absolutely horrible. Now there is a trick to this. I hope that you can see that there's oxygen all over the place. So leave oxygen until last because it's going to be the toughest to balance. But I've got a few tricks to show you. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to balance carbon and hydrogen atoms first. So let's do exactly that. So I've got three carbon atoms on the left. So I should have three carbon atoms on the right. What about hydrogen? Six on the left, six on the right. So that means that I need to have three H2Os over there. But now here comes the problem. If you try to balance out the oxygens, oxygen only gets delivered in pairs, in groups of two. Let's count the oxygens on the right. So three times two gets me six oxygens plus another three. Now, I've got nine oxygens in total on the right, and there's no ways that you can balance these out by adding pairs of two. So the way to fix this is to make sure that you've actually got even numbers on this side as well. Here's the trick. 
So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to double these numbers. So I'm going to double this and make that 6. I'm going to double this and make that 6. But just be careful because that means that I have to double that as well. Because I need to keep the carbon and the hydrogen atoms balanced at the same time. Now we can balance our oxygen atoms. Because on the right I have got 6 multiplied by 2 which gets me 12 plus another 6 which gets me 18 oxygens. That means that I can add 9 of these pairs of oxygen and that will balance everything. Balancing these is sometimes the toughest part of this game and we're going to try a couple of things and I'm just going to show you one more example after this. Okay, uh, now one of the things that's happening in industry a lot is that ethanol, this molecule, this alcohol is being used as a fuel because you can make this from maize. Um, all you need to do is stick it in a barrel, put in some yeast and um, allow it to ferment. This is the same way that you make um, alcohol for wine and um, you know spirits and all of that and it's an excellent fuel. You can combine it with petrol, burn it in normal petrol cars and it works. So um, what we can do is we can combust this stuff. Now here's the trick to combusting an alcohol. That oxygen over there is the pain. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give it the oxygen. So oxygen, not a problem. And then it reacts once again, give us carbon dioxide and some water. And let's see if we can figure out a balanced chemical equation. Follow the rules. Make sure that you balance the carbon and the hydrogen atoms first. So uh, two carbon atoms on the left and uh, we're going to make two on the right. There we go. So let's make two over there. What about the hydrogen? Uh, now be very careful here. There are five plus another one. So we've actually got six on the left. So let's make six on the right. Okay, so there we go. Now let's take a look at the oxygen and it looks like we've got a problem but we actually don't. Now remember when you count the oxygen on the right here. So there's two times two which gets me four oxygens. Three, four, five. Okay, so, uh, sorry, let's count that again. So there's uh, two times two which is four and three times one which gets me another three. So there's seven in total on the right hand side here. Okay, so it might seem like we can't get seven out of these pairs. But don't forget that you still have an oxygen over there. So what we can do is we can say there's one oxygen. How do we get the rest of the oxygen from here? We add another three. Okay, if that went a little bit quickly, the beauty of these videos is you can rewind and look at it again. And uh, guys, I hope you've enjoyed these reactions. Stay subscribed. Um, please spread the word because in uh, matric these are going to be vital and this is one of our tools for revising. Guys, cheers, bye.